Okay, welcome back. This is Standard 7. We're going to talk about templates and some page layout options for you. So I'm going to go to Microsoft Word here. And templates are amazing. Templates are pre-formatted documents, brochures, flyers, everything you could possibly want. So to find them, I'm going to go to File. And let's go to Create a New here. Now it gives us some default. Typically we just click on the blank document. But if we're looking for something, a student report with a cover. You want an event menu, everything is here. There are some different categories. We'll click on education. When I click education, it's going to search for some templates online. So here's an APA style report, a brochure, a lesson plan, things that are kind of related to education here. I think I saw a car bill of, yeah, there it is, the motor vehicle bill of sale. Not really education, but it was in here. Let's say I'm not finding exactly what I want. I do have some other categories here on the side. I can look at planners and trackers. I can look at sports that are within that little category there. I'm going to just put in here a student resume. That might be something handy for you. It'll go out, it'll search, and here is a very simple student resume. Uh, it's going to emphasize your education first because that's probably your strong point. Maybe you do have some experience, you you know work the summer at the snowy shack or whatever, but as a student, you probably don't have a lot of uh, education or excuse me not education uh, work background so we're going to choose this one that's going to highlight your education first so I'll click on create it'll download your template and here we go so it's got some assistance here on the side you can just go in put your own name in here if you don't have a LinkedIn profile you can just delete that here's your objective uh, it gets you started it, it makes you look like you know a little bit about what you're doing I like templates also because if I'm asked to create something that I've never done before, maybe I need to create a brochure, I can save a lot of time by going and looking at different options I have out here, and it starts me out. If I don't like these colors, I can go and change the different colors. Uh, I can do a lot of different things to make myself look like I knew what I was doing. Okay, now we're going to look at creating and customizing some margins in our document. Uh, typically, a lot of times you probably change the margins in your document when your paper doesn't quite fill enough pages, so you make the margin 1.1, but there are other more legitimate reasons to that. Let me show you how to do that within your document. So this is in the page layout. If I come up to the page layout, I have the, the margins. We're going to change the orientation a little bit. I have some pre-set up. This is a normal. Okay, I could go with narrow if I'm trying to fit more on the page, uh, moderate, make it a little bit wider. Um, I can also go to custom margins. Now when I click this, it's going to give me the page setup dialog box. This is the same dialog box I would get if I clicked on this more options button right here. I can change my, mo my margins a little bit. Maybe I need some more room at the bottom because uh, I'm going to be putting page numbers or I need room for someone to write notations. I don't know what that might be, but I can change these. I click OK and now the bottom of each of my pages has a one and a half inch margin. I could also, if I select the text, I can change the margins. One way I can do this is with the ruler bar up here. Now I can change the margins for the whole document just by dragging, and you can see what that's doing there to my right margin. I'm going to control Z to undo that. But what if I just want to change the indent that I have, and I want to have section one of each of the articles be indented a little bit more? I can grab, if I can find my mouse, I can grab just the indent and you can see that it's moving that over and I'm gonna do the same thing on this if I grab the top it just does the first line if I grab the bottom arrow it just does the bottom line that I have selected I actually did both right there I could also do both right there and all I have affected right now is just that one section of text because it was highlighted okay now we're going to talk about section and page breaks within document Let's say at the end of each uh, section or each article of the Constitution, I want to insert a new page break so I know that we're moving on to something else. Uh, we have talked about the Congress in Article 1. We're going to talk about the Executive here in Article 2. There's a couple of ways I can insert a new page there. I can go up to the layout and go to breaks, and I can just insert a new page, and it will automatically place this on a new page. The shortcut for that if I was just here, I could use a control enter and it will know that does the same thing. It just inserts me a page break right there. 
The breaks are also handy if I'm working in my document and I've got multiple columns. And instead of having to enter a bunch of times to get to the bottom of the column and start the next column, I can just come up to my layout, go to breaks, and I can insert a new column break. And it will take me from the column that I'm in and take me right to the top of the next one. We're going to be looking also now at inserting some other sorts of breaks. We've got section breaks. So again, back up here in our breaks, I can go up and I can make it be, uh, break it onto my next page. It's going to create what's called a new section. In order to see what those look like, I'm going to go back to my home tab. And this little button right here is the, uh, it shows all of the hidden things. So when I click on this, you can see that I've got a section break here. Every time this little backward P appears, that is an enter. Instead of a space, it shows up as a dot. So between all of these words, I'm going to have a dot. This is pretty handy sometimes if you can't figure out what's going wrong with your formatting, if you're not quite sure what's in there. Uh, you look up here, I have a page break. So it pretty much spells out everything that's going on. This is pretty handy just when, like I said, the text is not doing quite what you think it should. There might be something hidden in there that you just can't see. So go back to your home tab and click on this editing tool and it will show you all the stuff you've got going on. Next up, we're going to look at page orientation. Now the orientation right now, this is portrait. If I come up to my, excuse me, my layout tab, I can go to the orientation. And portrait is what we're used to seeing a paper as typically. If I go to landscape, it's going to turn everything so that the pages are on their side. It's control Z to undo that. I maybe want to put just one page that is going to be like this. And we'll use article three, which is the, uh, the declaration of how the uh, judiciary is set out. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to use a control enter to create a new page right there. So it's all on its own page. I'm going to highlight all this text and go into my orientation. And again, rather than just choosing this, I'm going to pull open my, my more options. And I have the option, I can supply it to my selected sections, my whole document, my selected text. So I'm going to do this selected text. Let's make it landscape. And now what I have is I have a document that is portrait, portrait. I've got one page, which is landscape. Okay, and I've also got this partial page right here. So again, let's go back to my home. Let's open this up and see what's going on. Oh, I've got a page break in there. Let's backspace that, delete that. Now I've got a section break, and I can see that I've got that on its own page. That might come in handy if you're writing a report and you want to put a table in there or a chart that does not really work well in a portrait mode. You can go in and you can put that in as just the landscape. Now we're going to look at some of your headers and footers that you can put into a document. Those are going to be in the insert tab because we're putting those in. I have headers, I have footers, and I have page numbers under the header and footer group. If I want to put a header, a header appears at the top of every page. I can choose some options here. It's going to have a lot of different things I can choose. Let's just choose retrospect. This is going to be the top of our page right here. I type what I want. I can close it. And now that page has a, a header on it. Editing our headers and footers is actually quite easy. They're up here. It's kind of it's kind of uh, washed out a little bit here. They call it grayed out, but we're not using black, so it's not great. I can click on it, and here is the information. I can change document title. I can change the date because I have the contextual menu appear up here. I can change the design of it. I can change the layout, so I've got different colors and some other things like that. When I'm done. All I have to do is go back to my design, I close the header and footer, and whatever changes I would have made are there. Alternately, if I wanted to, no, that's not where I want to do it. I want to go back to insert, I want to go to my header, and here I can just remove the header completely, and then it's gone. The same thing works with footers. I can put those at the bottom of each page. Let's insert a footer choose the one I'd like, and I've got my information here. Now this can be pretty handy if you're printing maybe in a lab setting and everybody's printing all at once. If you have a footer with your name at the bottom, then all of your papers are going to be known as your papers, so they're not going to get mixed up with somebody else's work that just isn't the same high quality that you're used to producing. And finally, we're going to look at, for this little section, inserting page numbers. Let's go to insert. 
Again, here's our page numbers. We can pull this down. We have a lot of different options. We can put them at the top of the page. Here's about 25 different ways that we can put the page number in here. Left, right, middle, top with a circle. We put them at the bottom of the page. These are some plain ones. They've got some accent bars. So let's do this. This is block number. This is page whatever of 13. I obviously want to start at the beginning of my document, not here. Uh, but when you add these, you just go up to the very beginning, put this in here, and then there's the information we need. I'll close it. I don't like that footer. Let's click in here, um, and then I can just go ahead and I can just delete this here, get rid of everything, close it, and there my page number is, is gone from that particular page. Now let's show you a couple of different ways that you can work with columns within a document. So I've got this, this article too, which talks about the executive power. I'm going to first off come out here to my layout, and let's pull this open. I want to change the orientation, and I want to make it landscape for just that selected text. Let's go here. Now I have the text of the president here. This is all the sections here. Back to Article 2. That was already a, a landscape page. That's what threw me off for a second there. So I'm going to insert, excuse me, I'm going to go to Columns in my Layout tab. And let's just make this two columns. Now, these are the pre-laid out ones. I could go to More Columns and get some other options. So here's some more columns. Uh, it's going to default them to four inches wide with a half inch spacing if I want them equal column width. Maybe I want one column to be bigger than the other. So as I make this column bigger, it makes my spacing smaller. It's going to take care of that for me. Let's just go back to four inches for both of these, make it equal column width. Two columns, I can put a line between it if I'd like to. So let's just do that. Now what I have is I have two columns and I have the line in between them. To make these look a little bit better, maybe I grab this and I go back to my home tab and let's fully justify that text so it looks at least it looks a little bit cleaner that way. So that is one way we can look at creating columns. Let's show you from a scratch document. Here we have a blank document. So let's go in. We're going to go to our layout tab. Let's make the orientation landscape. Uh, maybe I want to change my margins a little bit. Let's make these custom. Uh, I want to have maybe a half an inch all the way around so I can get as much stuff into my document as I possibly can here for my for my brochure I'm making for class. So if I do this, half an inch all the way around, normal, apply it to my whole document. Okay. There's the page. I've got a half inch margin all the way around. Let's go to my columns and let's make this a three column. I'm going to make a brochure. I didn't want to do that. I want to go to more columns. So what I want to do, I want to make equal width, but because I have a half inch here, when I fold this brochure, I'm going to have a half inch. That's going to make this margin with the fold right down the middle kind of smaller. So let's make the spacing between each of these an inch. So now when I fold this, what I'm going to have is 2.7 inch width columns. Let's click OK and you can look at it. If I fold my brochure, I fold it here, and now I have, with this split line on the page here, I've got a half inch on this side of the column and a half inch on this side of the column. Again, I can go back into my columns. I can go to more columns if I wanted to put a line between them. I could do that. Let's just make it a little bit easier. The line's not going to show up until I start to type something in there. So don't let that throw you off quite yet. Okay, let's take a minute here and we're going to look at tabs. Tabs are a way to indent your text just by pressing the tab key there right by the letter Q. So if I press my tab one time, you can see this paragraph, it indents a half an inch. And if we look up on our ruler bar, you can see here is my first indent. So that shows me where my first line indent is. I could move that if I wanted to. Let's just go back to here. Tab the next time and it's going to push everything in another half an inch. Continue to tab, it will do that a half an inch at a time. Let's undo this here. If I want to change my tabs, I'm going to go to my paragraph group, open up the dialog box, and click on tabs. It's currently set to default at a half an inch. If I change this to an inch and I click OK, now when I tab it, it's going to be tabbing an inch. And it will do this for the rest of my document because that's what I've selected. I can also manually add some tab stops. If you look up in the left-hand corner up here, you can see I have a left tab. If I click it again, I'll get a right and a center. I can come up here to my ruler bar, and I already have my tab set at one inch, but I'm going to place another one here. Right below the ruler, if I click while this is highlighted as a left, I can place a special tab right here. 
Okay, I can move that tab back and forth. I'm just going to put it here. I'm going to click again. That's a center. So when I tab to that position, it would automatically start to center the text. Or I'm going to use a right tab. I'm going to place another right tab right here. For some reason, that's not letting me place it right against the edge. So I'll just move it over. And now I have a tab here and a tab here that I have added. Okay, the last things we're going to do, we're going to be looking at our page color, a page border, and I'm going to show you how to work a little bit with watermarks. So we're going to go into the design tab here, and I have my page color, my page borders. This is actually pretty easy. I click on page color. I find the color I want. Okay, I can come into the page border. Let's find one. I want my border to be a box, a shadow, 3D. Let's just go with a box. Uh, let's make it a little bit thicker, and then I can change the coloring of it, make it a little bit darker than what I've got around here. Click OK, and now I have a, a border around the whole thing. The last thing I'm going to show you is the watermarks. Watermarks are nice because you're able to put wording behind it that kind of shows up when you print it so that it's got it marked as a text. I can change it to draft. I can also do some things with making custom watermarks. Maybe I don't want to say draft. Maybe I want to say it. I want to say mine. So I don't want you to copy this. Okay. The last thing I'm going to do that's kind of fun with watermarks is do a custom watermark. And I can put a picture in here. So I can do no watermark. Let's go to picture. And I can select my picture. When I select my picture, it gives me some options here. I can choose something from a file that I already have. I can go out. I can do a, a search on Bing. I'm going to go to browse. I have here my downloads and I saved a picture of the flag. So I'm going to insert this picture. It's going to wash out. I don't want it to come in at full brightness color. It'll it'll uh, compete with my text. But when I do this, now I have the flag as my watermark behind each of these. Uh, I've actually encouraged students in the past to put pictures of their teachers in here for an English report. It turned out pretty well. They actually got extra credit for it. So anyway, that is it for this particular section on our templates and formatting the page.